20 October 2020, and I'm joined by Mr. Abed Niko Bebe, Organizing Secretary of the MDCT. How are you, sir? I'm great, and how are you? The first question that I want to ask is, what is your current status in the MDCT? In terms of the Supreme Court judgment, I'm the National Organizing Secretary of the MDCT. This past week, I had an interview with Mr. Kalipani Pugeni and also the Secretary General of the MDCT at the press conference, where they said there was some disciplinary action or suspension taken against yourself. Can you clarify what is the current status? What I can say is yes, there was a discussion along those lines, but uh, in terms of the resolutions of uh, that meeting, there is no uh, suspension currently taking place. There was a recommendation, however, to the leadership for uh, some uh, action to be taken. So in other ways, there is a proposal for that, but not in actual fact a suspension. There is a question what I, that I want to ask you regarding an article that came out of NewZimbabwe.com. And they're saying, Abednego Bebe has said he will not attend a kangaroo disciplinary hearing called on him by Patrick Secretary General Douglas Monzor. What is your comment on this article? My first public interview that I've taken is, is with you today. Somebody is playing some dirty uh, work. I truly believe somebody is, is doing that on my behalf. And I can tell you, I know that person who is doing that. I've confronted that person before that interview. And the, some of the, I mean, that particular question I raised with him. And now all of a sudden, I find the same question on Okay, are you at liberty to disclose who this person is? No, I, I'm not at liberty to disclose because I have not spoken to him. I, I need to confront him once again because I spoke to him yesterday on WhatsApp. Okay, so if there was a disciplinary process to be called, you would be willing to subject yourself to this disciplinary process? I'm a true constitutionalist, and I'll follow what the MTC constitutional dictates. So what role are you going to be playing in the Congress processes? Obviously, I've got my constitutional roles that are spelled out in the Constitution. I'll follow those roles in terms of the Constitution of the MTCT. The, the letter that you wrote, it was indicating a lot of problems in, the, in certain aspects, specifically the, the lists, the delegate lists, you say there were problems, the 2014 delegate list, is that resolved? Actually, uh, if you are referring to an affidavit at the High Court, I'm not at uh, liberty to disclose or discuss that one because uh, it's actually before the courts. It has to go through a court system, and until the matter has been dealt with through a court system, I'm not at liberty to start deliberating on that one. Okay, that's fantastic, and I understand exactly the reason why we cannot discuss this issue. So I want us to give, to bring this to an end because obviously you have clarified the important position, which is that you're not suspended and no disciplinary action is being taken as yet. There was just a resolution of the National Council. The National Council and the National Executive, were they properly constituted? Well, I, I don't want to discuss such kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the reason, I mean, uh, such kind of, uh, the, you know, talk because uh, there are so many things that are happening, and uh, some people might see it the way they see it. But as far as I'm concerned, I take it it was uh, it was uh, it was uh, it was a virtual meeting, and I leave it as a virtual meeting up until somebody raises an ire out of those meetings. Then I'll give a full comment. Okay. Is there any improvement that you would like to see in the processes that are currently taking place? Well, the, the improvement that I've always yearned for, uh, the improvement that I'll, I've always advocated for is the improvement where people can actually unite against ZANPF instead of uh, uh, finding ourselves every time we are uh, on the newspapers or in the media for wrong reasons. So the best is to make sure that we put our house in order, we unite the party, we go for a united extraordinary congress, which is supposed to be a success, by the way. Okay, what has been the sticking point? I've heard you speaking about this since the beginning. What has stopped this unity? 
from happening. Obviously, unity is not as easy when you have got a lot of people who have different interests and they are coming from different different backgrounds. That's why you find at times uh, unity negotiations uh, takes uh, maybe up to two, three years. So it is because we will be trying to accommodate every interest of those interested parties. Okay, do you think it's still possible to unite all these sides which are at such a difficult point and what would need to be done? To, to bring this this unity about well my belief is uh, it's a, it's very possible and if you remember here right here in Zimbabwe there was an issue of ground where more than 20,000 people were killed and after those people had died, there was need, and the Zimbabweans decided to come together, and they, they talked, and eventually ZAP united with ZANU PF to form ZANU PF. So I don't see it in, impossible when it comes to the opposition. These are part of the ups and downs that we should always accept that they are there, and then we deal with them. Organizing Secretary Abed Niko Bebe, I'm really appreciative that you came and talked to me. I've been trying to get hold of you for a very, very long time. And I wish one day you'll be able to come back and answer questions from members, because members have, have become the victim here. The, the leaders have been talking, but members have not had a chance to talk. Is there anything else you want to say before we close? No, I've got nothing, nothing more to say. Uh, other than saying thank you very much for the 